What's up, Jose? I'm Micah Jesse, and we are thrilled today to be joined with Jake Bug. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Your debut album went straight to number one. It just 18 years old, incredible. You're now 22, you've got three albums to your name, you've got a new single, a new album. How are you feeling about it all? Yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, yeah, just uh, getting along with it, really, and uh, a lot of touring involved, um, but it's nice to have uh, another body of work out there. So, uh, yeah, just uh, keeping on going and, uh, and seeing what, what happens. Uh, it brings me to my next question. On on my on my one, which a lot of people thought might have been a typo, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, but would you consider this, in your opinion, to be your best body of work yet? I don't know. Like uh, I think there's like songs I'd probably take from this album and the songs I'd take from other albums and uh, make a best of probably. But uh, but no, it's um, it's just nice to have something different out there. It's hard to. I'm probably the worst judge of my own music. I kind of leave it up to. The fans, really. Totally. Not the critics. We don't care about the critics, right? <laughs> no, not so much. No. Right? Um, the album's title track is about losing it all. Uh, you sing, I need to read this so I make sure I get it right. Three years on the road, 400 shows, wow. Uh, where, where do I call home? No place to go. How do you make f being on the road feel like home? Uh, well, I think it's all about the people you surround yourself with, I think. I have a good lo a lot of people around me, my band and, and crew and stuff. and. Uh, but it's kind of like, um, yeah, you're just in a different place all the time, so it's hard to kind of really nail down your bass, uh, let's say. And this album in particular is a bit more melancholy than your other work. I, I would say your first two albums were a bit more poppy. Um, where did that come from? And um, kind of tell us where you're at right now. Uh, I kind of came from, uh, I guess it was just, um, spending a lot of time on my own in, uh, in the studio and reflecting back on the, the last few years or so, and I guess it's kind of uh, a bit intimate and personal. Um, so, uh, but I don't really think about it too much when I write. I just kind of let it flow and just uh, see what happens. Uh, I don't really like to be too conscious of it, really. Cool. Um, where do you think your love of music came from, and uh, which artists and groups would you say you, you know, inspired you growing up? Uh, well, I like all kinds of music. Um, I just, I just really love like a good song and wh whoever writes that song and whatever genre it is doesn't really matter to me so much it's about the song itself and um, I, when I was growing up I was a big fan of you know your classics people like Johnny Cash and Neil Young and stuff like that but yeah it's, um, it's all about the songs. For me. We have a Twitter question from at Singfire uh, who wants to know when asked about his favorite music he mostly names male artists. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which female artist does he like? Um, one of my favorite country singers is a girl called Tammy Wynette. She's really good. She's got some stuff. Um, I love one of my favorite bands is Jeff Snare playing with uh, Grace Slick, who's uh, probably one of my favorite vocalists as well. Um, so no, it's not just male artists. It's, uh, I'm sorry if I just mention them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think your love of music came from and uh, who inspired you, I guess, as a kid to get into well, my mum and dad were into music, not the kind of music I, I enjoy or wanted to do, so I kind of didn't think I'd get into music because of that, but one day my uncle came around and, uh, with a guitar and showed me loads of uh, cool music, like bands like Cream and people like Jimi Hendrix and stuff, and I just kind of fell instantly in love with it, and uh, I just kind of pr started progressing with the guitar, really. Awesome. Uh, most people know you as a singer and a songwriter, but what they may not know about you is that you also produced almost all the tracks on your latest album. Um, how did that come about, and how challenging, I guess, was that as opposed to singing and songwriting? Um, it was a different challenge, absolutely. It's, um, it's not something I intentionally ever thought I would do, um, and I don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. I just kind of play around with stuff until it sounds good. That's, uh, I don't really know so much about the technical aspects of it, let's say. All right, well, you're learning, right? Yeah, you got it, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't had the opportunity to see you play live yet, but I want to know, do you play a mixture of all of your work when you play live? Yeah, I do, yeah. And it, it's been nice on this tour. Sometimes uh, I've been doing like a little bit of acoustic sections in some of them, kind of depending on what evening it is. If it's like Tuesday or Monday, I'll keep it nice and mellow, but <laughs> if, it's, if it's the weekend, keep it upbeat. Um, so yeah, we play a few of the old songs, uh, some stuff that I wrote before I even put the first album out, and, uh, and then some new stuff, obviously, of course. Cool, and then we, that leads us into another Twitter question. Does he plan to divide his set from acoustic and electric at future gigs like he did at the Cologne Philharmonic Hall this summer? 
Yes, um, that was kind of the the experimental gig for 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 trying that kind of divide out really, and um, and I had a I had a really nice time playing that show, and so we we kind of took it out on this tour a little bit for a few of the shows. Cool. You have been traveling the world. I saw on your Twitter and your Instagram, you've been in Italy and France and all over the world. Um, what inspires you to keep going? What inspires me to keep going is um, like. Um, it's a, it's a great thing to do, like traveling the world, of course, and meeting loads of new people, and and, um, <clears throat> and most of all, I get to play music, and um, and sometimes, like after the shows and stuff, like when people they talk to you and like when they s tell you that like a song meant something to them or um, it played a big role in their life or inspired them to do something, then that's the kind of stuff that inspires you to keep going and keep writing the song. Totally. And which song would you say personally um, is? seems to be the most uh, resonating with your fans? Um, I get songs like, uh, probably like Broken or Simple As This, which I haven't played for ages. I should probably relearn it, but uh, that's the one that people ask for quite a lot, but I, I don't know it anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question, another Twitter question, um, from Sion Nolan, or maybe it's Sean, but either way, hi. <laughs> I read an interview in which Michael Hollick said he was making a documentary about Jake. Is it finished yet? And if so, when is it coming out? Uh, I have no idea, and I'm kind of dreading it. I thought it was already out, I'm not sure, but uh, I have no idea. I'm, I, I'd be dreading to see the footage. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, what are you dreading about it? Uh, probably people seeing the, probably the real side of me, yeah. What's the real side of Jake? The drunk side. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're 22. You're legal. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Um, another question from Twitter um, from Sadie Sarazan. Jake, can you play the harmonica? Have you ever tried? And what's your favorite tune with the harmonica in it? Um, I uh, yeah. When I was about 15, 16, I used to play little shows in my hometown and. I used to have a harmonica where I'd play. I couldn't play it, I'd just buy one in the same key as whatever song I was playing in and just blow anywhere. Um, and uh, so no, I can't really play it. But um, my favorite song, I, I just think, uh, I don't know, Neil Young, Heart of Gold's a classic. You've got Donovan's got some good stuff, uh, like a song called Barrel of Geraldine or something. I'm loving, uh, what is it, the uh, Blues Travelers. The blues travels, <laughs> yes. That's totally. <laughs> um, and I know you play guitar. Um, what other instruments do you play? Uh, on this record, I played uh, a bit of drums, a bit of bass, and a bit of keys as well. So I'm not good in either of them, but uh, it's just nice to get some good sounds and experiment. And all yeah, and at least at least you're trying. Yeah. So you know? nice. um, and then you're so busy. You're here in New York. Where are you off to next? What's what's the next couple of weeks looking like for you? Um, the next couple of weeks I've got to go to, I think we go to Boston, uh, Washington, and uh, down to Mexico as well, so that's, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Will that be your first time in Mexico? No, it won't, no, it's, uh, but we always enjoy it down there, like the fans are always cool and like very enthusiastic, so we're looking forward to it. Where do you think your fans are the most enthusiastic? Where, where, where are the fans like freaking out over you? Uh, well, I'm not like, uh, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm not like uh, no pop act or like boy band thing, but the only time it felt like that was probably somewhere like Brazil was uh, pretty crazy. Uh, like uh, we had to get like private like police escorts and stuff like that. So that was uh, that was pretty crazy. Like uh, I didn't think that would ever happen. Was that cool for you, or was it weird? It was. It was kind of a bit of both. It was. It was cool. A little bit overwhelming, but uh, but it's amazing to go to another part in the world. That, uh, and see um, people enjoying your music, and um, it's, it's a cool feeling. What what on your phone or your iPod, iPod would people maybe be surprised about that you're listening to right now? I'm kind of dying for you to be like, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Something uh, crazy. <laughs> it won't be nothing. No, I'm like kidding. No, so totally uh, kidding. <laughs> I don't know, kind of more contemporary stuff. I, I, like, uh, I like my hip hop, um, like uh, you got Joey Badass and Run the Jewels, I guess they're from these parts, so. Um, yeah, they're, they're a couple that uh, I think are really good. I think the new, uh, I think the new Frank Ocean record's good as well. Um, but there's, um, yeah, there's not a whole lot that I'm digging uh, of contemporary music, to be honest. They're just a few. So. Cool. Um, and wrapping up here, while you're uh, in New York, is there are there any places that you're dying to hit up? Are you kind of a tourist? Do you like to go stop and at some of the, you know, sites and 
Um, I have to, like on this trip, I'm, I'm purposely not trying to go anywhere because uh, last time I, 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 I always go and do a mad shop when I'm here in New York. There's a lot of great shops, isn't there? So uh, I'm restraining myself this time around. But uh, I like going downtown. I've got a few friends there and there's uh, some great burger spots and stuff like that. So. Cool. You're making me hungry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go get some lunch. Thanks for, thanks for uh, stopping by and chatting with Husay. And we'll catch you next time right here on Husay.